Welcome back everyone, this is John. In this video, we're gonna cover how to set up a custom domain and uh, all the associated DNS records. Um, so this way you can use um, a domain that you own along with Let's Encrypt and uh, serve out um, or host you know, any application or server that you're self-hosting. Uh, and we're going to uh, use um, a Plex server that's running in our Docker for Windows environment as an example. And we'll kind of start from the very beginning of this process where uh, first you'll need to log into um, your Packet Riot account on uh, packetriot.com and visit the section custom subdomains. And so um, this is the first step uh, that you need to take if you want to use a custom subdomain. And what we're trying to do um, in this uh, workflow is verify that you are the owner of the domain. And so we use um, a mechanism that uh, is used by many other um, uh, systems and applications. Um, Google, Google App Engine is one that comes to mind. Um, I think Heroku uses this as well. And what they uh, attempt to test is that if you're able to create a uh, DNS record and, uh, and verify it, then that means you own it. And so we use the same mechanism here. And uh, we'll, we'll begin this process by uh, just clicking the verify domain button. And so, you know, for our demos, we um, we have a domain called packetdemo.com. And so it's it's very important when you're um, entering your domain that you you enter the root or the apex domain name. Um, you don't want to enter uh, something like www.mydomain.com. You, know, you just want you just want to verify the the name of the apex domain, um, which in our case is, is packetdemo.com. And so what that does is it creates a random uh, value that you use for creating a text record. And what our system will do is in the next um, one to two minutes or within intervals of one to two minutes, it will check to see if this record exists. And so um, what we'll do is uh, I use DigitalOcean for um, hosting um, uh, my or for managing my DNS records. So I'm going to go and manage uh, my domain and then uh, click text records and paste the value here. Now what's really important is that I need this text record to be associated to to at which um, implies the 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 apex or the root domain um, and this is very important and so um, you 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 either want to follow instructions from your um, from your registrar or um, or just use the at symbol here or leave it empty. And so I'll go ahead and create this record. And then um, as this is created, um, we'll need to wait one or two minutes for um, for the packetriot.com server to uh, perform its check. And then uh, you'll see right over here that in the verified column, there is a check mark, but it's gray. When, when this is verified and your ownership of this domain is verified, this is gonna turn green and then you'll be able to use uh, this domain for um, setting up any rules. And, and it's not just um, the root domain that you can use. You can use any subdomain from this point on once it's been verified. And so we'll uh, you know, give it one or two minutes for um, the verification operation to happen. And, uh, and we'll, we'll catch you on the other side uh, after it's been verified. Okay, and so as you can see, um, our, do our, our text record has been uh, picked up by our verification service and has been verified. And so now the, uh, the check mark, once we refresh the page after one or two minutes, um, um, it's, it's turned green since it was able to verify that, that this value um, was available in a text record um, that we had created with our registrar. And so um, sometimes uh, this step can cause users trouble and uh, a lot of it has to do sometimes with um, perhaps not uh, pasting in this entire value incorrectly. And so if you do run into any issues, you can always re repeat this operation by just clicking um, delete and um, deleting um, this, this attempt to verify and waiting maybe like 10 or 15 minutes and then going back and, and trying again with, um, with, with setting this up in your registrar. Uh, and so, um, you know, this is this is just a way to kind of re, re, repeat the operation in case you have any errors. So um, now that this operation is done, we can start using this domain for any of our tunnels, and we can also use any subdomains 
for these tunnels as well. And so uh, what we'll, we'll do is we'll create a quick example. Um, we have this tunnel running over here and it's hosting a Plex server. And so uh, what I'd like to do is create a uh, subdomain called um, plex.packetdemo.com. Um, and what I'll do is I'll um, just create a subdomain here um, with my registrar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a C name record. And so um, with the C name record, I can just um, basically create an alias and say that uh, plex.packetdemo.com should resolve to delicate pine and whatever that resolves to, whichever IP address that resolves to will be returned. And so now this is not the only way um, you can set up a custom subdomain. You can also set up an A or a quad A record. So this is for IPv4 addresses and this is for IPv6 addresses. And so if I, um, if I just go ahead and um, open up a quick shell to my tunnel and type in packet write info, you'll see that um, the IPv4 and v6 addresses for the server that your tunnel's connected to um, can just be printed out from here. And so if you want to set up an A or a quad A record, you can do that. Um, they all work, it's just a matter of preference. And so we'll use a C name and uh, create this record. And uh, all right, so uh, that's been done. And so what I'll do is just to kind of verify that my record is functioning, I'll actually um, remain inside the container and and just ping it. And so you can see here that after I, I ping this uh, subdomain, it's uh, reporting this this IP address 138.197, which is the exact same um, IPv4 address that's being printed out by uh, the client here. And so, um, okay. So now we're ready to um, add a new rule um, that uses our uh, custom subdomain. And we wanna use Let's Encrypt for setting up the certificates. And so what this will do is uh, this will um, this will actually create two layers of encryption. And so uh, with Let's Encrypt and the way our client is um, and how our client supports it, it actually creates uh, the certificates and the keys and stores them um, right next to the uh, configuration files for your Packet Riot client. And so um, you're you're the holder of the certificates and the keys. And so um, all the traffic between the client and uh, and our servers are, are always performed over um, t over a TLS connection. That TLS connection is basically established as a reverse tunnel. So that's using the certificate that's on our server. And so when you use Let's Encrypt with um, a packet write tunnel, you actually have two layers of encryption. You have encryption that begins um, at the client who's visiting your website, um, and they will make a TLS handshake. Um, with your server um, and it will be tunneled over the uh, re reverse TLS connection between the client and our server. So um, it's giving you two layers of, of encryption, which is pretty fantastic. Um, and so I'll, I'll, I'll come back and return to creating this rule here. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll specify the, uh, the domain that we wanna use, which is plex.packetdemo.com and uh, if you've seen some of our past videos, you'll see that um, that our destination is is the name of our container, which is just Plex, and we've, we're also just specifying the HTTP port here. And so uh, I'll talk a little bit more about this. And so when you set up Let's Encrypt and a custom domain with your uh, tunnel, um, the client program is going to function as a as a, as the TLS terminating reverse proxy. And so what that means is that um, the client program is going to uh, take care of doing the TLS handshake um, with the client that's on the internet, right? Like whoever your visitor is that's trying to access your Plex server. Um, and then and then that handshake is gonna occur between the, the, the internet client and then the Packet Riot client. And then once that secure tunnel is created, that, that session's created, it's then going to um, reverse proxy all the requests in plain text to this port 32400. This is a really typical setup. Um, it's it's used by um, by Nginx, Caddy, and Apache, where you have some kind of application server that's running on, uh, on, a, on a port, and um, it allows one sort of internet-facing server 
to take care of um, handling all the TLS connections. And then you can run multiple application servers um, that are just listening to local host um, and uh, listening on, on separate different ports. And so if you're familiar with web servers, um, this is gonna be very clear to you. If you're new to web servers and you're new to Let's Encrypt or reverse proxies, hopefully this description was uh, helpful for you. And so the one last flag that we're going to add here is the Let's Encrypt flag. And so that's it. We've just added Let's Encrypt uh, to this traffic rule um, using our custom subdomain. And so I'll just print everything out here and uh, you'll see that our new rule has been added. And so like, um, like all configuration changes, we are going to restart our container. And Let's Encrypt does take time to uh, negotiate. And so um, you'll kind of see that, um, uh, that the list of our HTTP rules were printed below here, um, along with our TCP rules. And then uh, this, this message right here is printed out just to remind you that it could take about a minute or two for Let's Encrypt to, uh, to be set up the first time. And so once, once this is set up though, the, the maintenance of these certificates will be performed automatically. So right now the expiration date is September 3rd on this certificate, but you know, every 30 days this will actually be updated so that your certificates will always be up to date. And so this has uh, been set up and is working. So um, we'll go ahead over here and visit our Plex server using our uh, using using our custom subdomain. And what I'll show you here is uh, the certificate. And so you can see that it's been created by Let's Encrypt. And it shows us a lot of the same information that was printed in our window right over here, its expiration date. What I'll also show is um, so we've been maintaining uh, our Docker Compose file in this directory called Home Servers. And if you watched some of the other videos, um, uh, I talked about how um, we uh, mount our uh, we mount some directories from our host uh, into the containers. And so we do that right over here, um, so that this way the configuration for our packet riot client and then any of the associated certificates will all be stored in this directory path here which is c colon slash servers slash home servers slash packet right and so when we visit it here you'll you'll see that um, you know this is our configuration um, and and it has the new rule that we added earlier and also has this directory called certs and so this is the directory where all the certificates that are managed and um, created through let's encrypt uh, this is where they're all um, stored, and so um, you know, uh, with 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 uh, you know, with our choice to keep um, you know this this configuration directory existing on our host Windows 10 system, and then just mapping it into the uh, the slash data path in the container, it allows us to make all of this portable. And so, if you need to destroy your containers um, for any reason, or you just want to move your containers, you know, you can just move this entire directory home servers. And, uh, and recreate your entire um, setup of containers and then maintain your certificates. Um, and it makes it very simple for you to, uh, to either back up or to migrate. And so as you can see, um, just a couple of steps here, you know, uh, just to sort of recap, we, uh, we first verified our custom domain. Um, we created a text record in, um, in the registrar that I use, which is DigitalOcean, but you'll have to use the registrar um, that you've configured with um, um, you know, the, uh, the, the company that you purchased your uh, subdomain, your custom domain from. And then uh, once it was verified, and so you'll, you'll want to wait for this green check mark. And once it, um, once it appears, uh, you'll be verified. And then you could start creating um, different um, subdomains. I mean, you could also create um, a mapping of your, of your root domain as well. You'll want to, or you'll have to use an A record for that, but you can do that as well. And then, um, we set it up here with Plex and, uh, and it's just working. And so uh, hopefully this is helpful. Um, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of users, um, you know, turn to Packet Riot um, to allow them to self-host from home. And a lot of developers also use this tool um, for, for performing their work and being able to host a test deployment or a test application 
um, you know, as they're sort of making progress in a program that they're running on. And so hopefully uh, this is a helpful um, walkthrough of how to use custom domains. Um, we are going to be uh, expanding uh, in the next couple of videos the number of applications that we've been setting up in our compose file here. And so with, uh, with having a custom domain set up, we can start uh, adding more applications and then setting up subdomains for them and then start demonstrating how you can run um, many different servers behind one tunnel. And so, uh, uh, you know, we'll uh, look forward to making those videos. Thanks again for joining us for this one. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.